today's episode, we're going to talk about doing loudness normalization in Final Cut Pro 10. Now, if you're not familiar with audio loudness, the idea is it will help you to get consistency in your audio loudness, the perceived loudness, from video to video. I'm going to assume that you understand the concept of loudness and loudness normalization. If you do not, I have some other videos that you can link to up here in the little I menu that will talk through this in much more detail and walk through it. Here's how you do it quickly in Final Cut Pro 10. First of all, because Final Cut Pro 10 does not have a loudness meter, you'll want to download this free loudness meter from Yulian, I think it's how it's pronounced. Go ahead and follow the normal installation instructions. And then when you come back here into Final Cut Pro 10, you'll have access to it after you restart Final Cut. Now, after you have that installed, the first thing you're going to need to do is actually mix your video piece. So that is to say, you need to get the, the clips consistent. So if you're coming from different audio sources, you're gonna need to do some manual work to get those consistent from clip to clip. Likewise here, for example, I have some music on the intro. I had to get that to the same level. So it wasn't a jarring experience to come from the intro music to the dialogue. So once you have all that done, the next thing we need to do is get all of these clips into a single compound clip. Easiest way to do that is to come up to your project, right click, choose duplicate project, double click on that so that we're using the new project that you just created. In this case, it's called main one. Come back into the timeline. I'm gonna do a command A to select all of the clips, right click and choose new compound clip. You can see here that it first of all gives us an option to give it a name. We'll just call it main one clip three, that's fine. And you can see it puts it all into a single clip. Once we have that, there are a couple of audio plugins we want to insert into the audio here. And the first one we want is a compressor. So first of all, what I do is come down under audio, select all, and we can just type in compressor. We'll just go ahead and grab this one, the logic compressor and drop that on our timeline. Next up, we're going to need the Yulian loudness meter. So we'll just do a search for that. Here it is. And also drop that onto the clip. You can see those are now represented up here. We have the compressor and the loudness meter. Next step, we wanna go ahead and open both of those. And we'll lay them out here so we can see both of them. First of all, here's the loudness meter. We are most interested in the integrated loudness that will be represented here. And it's going to show it in measurements of LUFS, which stands for loudness units full scale. We're also looking at our true peak max. We wanna keep this at minus one to minus 1 1.5 dB true peak. So these are two features that you don't get with Final Cut Pro 10. Now, to do the normalization, to make the audio loud enough to, to reach the target that we're targeting, we need to use a compressor in most cases. So for example, if your piece is going to be broadcast on television, you'll need to meet one of the television broadcast standards. That'll vary from place to place in the United States. The target is minus 24 LKFS, which is the same as 20, minus 24 LUFS. And in Europe, it is minus 23 LUFS. In other parts of the world, you'll just need to look that up by talking to the TV station to which the program will be broadcast. For web, the recommendation is minus 16. LUFS. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disable this compressor and get an initial reading on the overall loudness of my piece. And to do that, to get the integrated loudness, I actually have to have it play the entire way through so I can get this integrated number here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, once we've done that, we can see at present we are at minus 23 LUFS. This would be great if we were going to broadcast television in Europe, but we are not, we're going to web with this particular piece. So I wanna get this down to minus 16 LUFS for a stereo piece, or if it's only mono, then we need to go to minus 19 LUFS, which is the perceptual equivalent to minus 16 LUFS stereo. So we're aiming for minus 16 LUFS. I'm going to set up my compressor to do that. There are a couple of things I need to do. First of all, on the attack, I usually set that as fast as possible at zero milliseconds and I set the release for dialogue, for most dialogue, somewhere around between 150 to 250. Ratio, I may tweak, but I might start probably at about three. Softening, I may tweak as well. I don't want it to be too soft um, because what I'm really trying to do here with the compressor is just manage transients. I'm just trying to get those little spikes that, that kick up and get in the way of us loudness normalizing and being able to lift the overall 
loudness of the audio. The limiter threshold, now it's important to understand there's a difference between true peak and a peak limiter. In this particular case, this is not a true peak limiter, it's just a peak limiter. That's another discussion about what the difference is, but really you're looking for a true peak target where you want to get to minus 1.5, uh, maybe as high as minus 1 dB. So what we need to do here is typically I will set this to about minus 2 dB. You may have to tweak that as well. So if you're noticing that you're still exceeding the minus 1 to minus 1.5 dB on true peak, you may need to pull this down even more. Now, before we get started, what I need to do is turn the compressor back on. Then I go ahead and run through our piece here. And while that's running, I'm gonna go ahead and tweak these settings until I can get this much closer to minus 16 LUFS. So here we go. The VT500 is a professional level lavalier microphone that's meant for TV broadcast, for film, and for theater. It's made by a company in Switzerland. And today we're gonna to take a closer look and listen. First of all, what does a professional level lavalier microphone offer that lesser microphones don't? Okay, got a lot closer this time. Now I got a little too loud, so I'm gonna go ahead and reset it here. And let's go through again. Professional level lavalier microphone that's meant for TV broadcast, for film, and for theater. It's made by a company in Switzerland. And today we're gonna to take a closer look and listen. First of all, what does a professional level lavalier microphone offer that lesser microphones don't? Here are a number of things that the Voice Technologies VT500 does have. First of all, RF shielding inside of the injection molded casing. It actually has a front facing capsule, which is a little bit different than most other lavalier microphones, but it works very nicely because it is an omnidirectional pickup pattern. So it's okay for it to be facing out. <laughs> Now, I would wanna go ahead and make sure that I got my integrated loudness to minus 16 LUFS through the entire piece. Couple of uh, descriptions here of what I changed. I brought the threshold up to minus 11.5 dB. You can see I was playing a little bit with the knee. The knee has to do with the curve um, for the threshold here as to how softly or hard it cuts in and actually pulls those transients down, those peaks back down. Um, and then we also worked on the ratio a little bit, three, to one is where we ended up. So with that, you can see we're getting really close here. Of course, I'd have to run through the entire piece to ensure. You'll also see that our true peak ended up at minus two dB. Again, if this had gotten above minus one dB, I would have had to come back in here and probably pull this limiter down just a little bit more. Maybe half a decibel, maybe one decibel, not a whole lot. So there is an overview very quickly of how to do loudness normalization in Final Cut Pro 10. Hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.